Bruce Stein with the National Wildlife Federation. I'm a senior scientist working on NWF's response to the Gulf oil spill, and I'm here at the Moat Marine Lab in Sarasota, Florida, at a symposium that we have helped to sponsor together with the Moat Marine Lab and the University of South Florida to really look at what the implications of the Gulf oil spill are, not just on the pelicans that everybody has seen pictures of and the sea turtles, but rather on the little things that actually serve at, at the base of the food web, the things that we may not see all the time that are essential to the health of the Gulf. So just as one example, bluefin tuna, which is a magnificent creature, uh, is already very much on the ropes. It only breeds in two places on Earth, the Mediterranean and the Gulf of Mexico. And it just so happened that just at that point in time, when the deep water horizon blew and started spewing oil into the water, that was the time when bluefin tuna were also releasing their eggs into the water. And so what the effect has been on bluefin tuna larvae is really unknown, but we can assume that many of these larvae were killed off after coming in contact with oil. What we still don't know, though, is what the effect of losing much of this year's uh, recruitment of bluefin tuna will be to the long-term uh, survival of that species. We know that that species is already under pressure from a number of other sources. What we wonder is whether this will be the thing that tips it over the edge and truly on the path to extinction. Let's hear what some of the scientists attending this symposium have to say. Uh, at the Gulf Coast Research Lab, we've been studying long and bluefin tuna in the Gulf of Mexico uh, for a number of years now, and, and we're finishing up a three-year study uh, looking at bluefin tuna larvae at the loop current. This has been an area where we've collected a lot of bluefin tuna, and so it just sort of set up that our cruise was set up in May, which you know was right at the time of this oil spill. And so we went out and ran several transects across the loop current, mainly on the western side and then into the northern region where there was a significant amount of oil. And we've identified over 300 bluefin tuna larvae that we've collected. And several of those larvae were collected in areas that were either uh, oil impacted, under sheen, under oil. So what we're hoping to do is, at least with the larvae that we find, we want to figure out, you may not visually see a different you might. You might see that they're a little bit smaller than they normally are, that, uh, that based on looking at their growth rates, you, when you age these animals, you'll be able to see that things have changed. Uh, but not only there, but you'll be able to determine if there are certain genes that these fish have that turn on when they get exposed to oil. And this is in, in most vertebrates. And so you can look at those genes and look at the prevalence of this gene being expressed um, to see if these animals were exposed. The next step would then be to take a captive larval fish and expose them to oil, disperse it, maybe a mixture, and then try to see how many animals die, how many animals had stunted growth, give us a, a better understanding of what this exposure means. We were providing satellite images directing the, the vessel to do some adaptive sampling in terms of trying to locate areas where bluefin tuna larvae are likely to occur. Also during the same time, National Fishery Service out of Gordon Grenfell was doing their standard surveys. So there were locations where we interacted with the larvae and the ship and the oil out there. And that data is presently being studied and, and, and researched to evaluate what percent of the overall habitat was influenced by the oil, surface oil, as well as the oil water mixture. I acknowledge the fact that any larvae that, that were in the surface oil, I, I presume to be dead. I presume that any of the larvae that was in the oil water mixture will be negatively impacted by this. Here's a population that's, that's heavily overfished right now. We can't afford to lose any possibility of increasing that population from a good year recruitment 